Good evening everybody, Simon here, Explosive Action, and I'm here with a special video. Not an update this time, this is an overview video of one of my favourite action directors of all time, and that is the very masterful David A. Pryor, who most of you will be aware made this fantastic film in front of me called Deadly Prey. Uh, but this is not the only film he made. Now, David Pryor, um, he was the chief responsibility behind a company called Action Interna International Pictures, AIP, which is not to be confused with uh, American International Pictures, AIP, which was uh, one of Roger Corman's early companies. Um, but I do like to think that, uh, you know, Roger, who's king of the bees, then David, well, he uh, he had his own AIP and in a way was his own king of the bees, action bees. And um, unfortunately, he uh, he left us in uh, 2015, um, which was very unfortunate. He was just coming back and making new films, um, Deadliest Prey, the sequel to the movie in front of me, and uh, a few more from there, and unfortunately, he passed away. But I'm just going to go through my collection of films from David A. Pryor. The first film accredited to David on uh, IMDb is Sledgehammer. This is a quite hilarious um, shot on video horror film, uh, slasher to be more precise. This is put out by Intervision. Uh, it is one of the, uh, as I was saying, shot on video, one of the earliest shot on video uh, movies from around about, uh, when are we looking, 83 or so? Something like that, 1983. Um, now it's as cheesy as anything. It is filmed on about $2. But I have so much fun with this film. The uh, the violence is quite quite out there. The uh, the blood is quite out there, and uh, there is a hilarious scene um, involving uh, I think it's Ted Pryor, who is uh, David's brother, and his name will come up quite a lot in uh, in this uh, overview, as he was in many of the films. Uh, Ted and his girlfriend uh, walking through. Uh, walking through the forest with a lake on the side and it's playing like panpipe music and it feels like one of those infomercials you know, by by this album of elevator hits, that kind of stuff. I found myself on the floor at that. Anyway, Sledgehammer, early shot on video horror and the first film from David Pryor. Next film is Kill Zone. You can think of this as a precursor to Deadly Prey, um, only on VHS as far as I know. Uh, CBS Fox tape out here in Australia. Um, it has similar plot as you can see on the back, mixing elements of Deer Hunter and First Blood. It tells the story of a green beret gone berserk, driven past the breaking point until he withdraws to the jungle to set up a kill zone which he disposes of his pursuers. So that's a little bit like Deadly Prey, and um, it's not as good. Um, nothing is really as good as Deadly Prey, but it is a lot of fun, and um, geez, the art on this one's really good, isn't it? Nice hand painted art. So uh, yeah, Kill Zone, definitely worth checking this one out. Next one is Man Killers. This one's a lot of fun. Uh, you could think of this um, as, uh, if you've seen films like uh, Sirius Santiago's version of The Expendables, it's uh, assembling a ragtag team to take down a drug cartel. Um, it's that kind of film. The uh, the ladies, it's a, it's a ladies, <laughs> primarily ladies film. Um, uh, unwilling, and it's facing uh, electric chair or uh, join this vigilante group, and well, that's what they do, man killers. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun with this one. Bazookas, nice and violent. Um, a word on these Blu-rays from um, from Olive um, and from Slasher Video. They are as best as they're going to get. They are not HD quality. It tells you on the back that they're mastered from the best qualities they could get, which were PAL Beta SP. Uh, from what I understand, um, a lot of David's early film, as in the actual film reels, are lost or destroyed. Um, and the master tapes used to create the VHS tapes back in the day are all that remains. I am not fussed. It is, you know, it, it's better than the tape, and it doesn't have the rolls and is not chewed up like my previous tape of Man Killers was. It would barely track. So I'm happy enough with these, and that's Man Killers. Killer Workout. This is a fun slasher. Um, it stars uh, 
Ted Pryor again, uh, David's brother, and it also has uh, David Campbell and Fritz Matthews, who are a cast that you will see again in Deadly Prey and a few other films um, from David. So this one is about a, um, a fitness club, a gym, that a um, lady goes to and is burnt to death by the machine. Uh, police don't know why. Then soon after that, uh, someone else is stabbed and killed. Police try and work it out, and more people keep dying, and the police keep failing to work it out. It's actually giallo esque when I try and explain it like that. Um, and, uh, anyway, of course, there's a reveal at the end of who the killer was. This is quite a good little slasher. Um, the same um, same thing applies with this Blu-ray from Olive, that it is mastered from the best elements they could get, but um, is uh, is suffering a little bit in quality. But hey, it's not chewed up tape like my last one was, so I am all good. And the king of all films, Deadly Prey. I have gone about this film many times. I've reviewed it on the blog. It was my number 100 film, uh, which was fitting for this one. Uh, here you can see the Australian VHS and the Blu-ray from Slasher Video, which is very similar quality to the VHS, as I've been explaining. Um, th there's not enough that can be said about this film. It is completely fantastic. Um, I'm sure everybody knows about Deadly Prey by now, but it is the, uh, the best B-action film, independent action film that I know of. I have fun with this every time I've watched it. I would have watched it at least 20 times. Um, it's a great film to watch with a uh, group. It's a great film to watch with some beers. It's got some amazing lines. It's got Ted Pryor running around in cut-off jeans. Just... <laughs> it's um, one of those... Uh, yeah, um, what's the archetype film? I can't remember. Um, Deadliest Game, one of those kind of films uh, where uh, you know the greatest hunt is man, and uh, Ted Pryor here gets picked up by uh, David Campbell and Fritz Matthew, his gang, um, to help train their um, their troops, trained by uh, being the uh, being the hare, and uh, they chase after him with their uh, machine guns and. Um, they are not uh, not expecting the fight that they get back because he just picks them off one by one, Rambo style, and it is a thing to behold. There are arms being chopped off, guy gets beaten to death with his own arm, scalping. After being in the forest overnight for, like, what, 12 hours, Ted resorts to eating a rat, which was just, seriously, you've been there for half a night, you're eating a rat? Anyway, I digress. Deadly Prey best film ever made. Operation Warzone. This one does not star Ted, this one stars Joe Spinell and is a uh, Vietnam War film. Uh, this is one of a few that uh, David shot and this one's quite good. Um, but uh, yep, your usual uh, American soldiers versus the Viet Cong guerrillas uh, that take on tunnel rats which um, you've seen in a few movies before. Uh, Operation Warzone, this one doesn't get talked about much, but it is actually pretty good, so this one's worth checking out. Night Wars, this one is really cool. Uh, Dan Haggerty, great, Grizzly Adams himself. So it's another Vietnam War film, or well, it's post-Vietnam War, and uh, involves uh, uh, Dan Haggerty, who um, keeps having the same recurring dream every night about uh, his buddy that was left in a POW camp in Vietnam. And... Um, Every time he wakes up, um, he has something from the dream with him. And, uh, well, they he goes on a mission to uh, go back and try and rescue his mate who is left behind in the POW camp. But um, it's a bit like Freddy Krueger film crossed with Vietnam War film. It's, it's actually pretty unique. So uh, Night Wars, this is definitely worth checking out. Hell on the Battleground, Japanese VHS. Um, this one is also another war film, as you can't tell by the cover. Um, this one's pretty good. It's got uh, David Pryor, uh, sorry, it's got Ted Pryor and um, Fritz Matthews playing uh, battle-hardened, um, what are they, captains? I can't remember. Um, who have to escort a uh, young lieutenant in um, 
through the through the jungle, and uh, it's not uh, during war, but uh, they are found out and attacked by Russians. Those pesky Ruskies, and well, it becomes a real war. So not much to show on the back here. It's all in Japanese. Good photos. It's Ted held in the background. This one's good fun. There's an Australian tape I did have at one point, but um, hey, Japanese tapes are better. Born Killer. Now, this is not a David A. Pryor-directed film, but it does star Ted Pryor, and it is on AIP. And I thought it was worth mentioning for those reasons. And that cover. That is that is one hell of a cover. I, I don't know who came up with this in, like, 1990, but they deserve an award. You got Ted coming out of Ted. Amazing. Anyway, so Born Killer is about... Um, this time Ted playing a bad guy um, and uh, one of his uh, cohorts that escape um, a chain gang and uh, attack a bunch of random um, kids playing paintball and uh, there's a bit of a cat and mouse chase thing going on and just Ted being evil and uh, that's the thing I don't like about this film to be honest is uh, Ted playing a bad guy it's not that he's bad at it, it's just I'm not used to it and uh, he gets quite savage. The violence is pretty good, but it's all a bit sadistic. Um, but it's you know it's definitely worth seeing if you can track it down. It's a very very rare tape. Uh, the American tape goes for silly money, and well this tape went for silly money. So uh, Born Killer, not a David Pryor film, but it is a Ted Pryor and an AIP film. Chase, also known as Death Chase. This is basically Deadly Prey in the city. That is essentially what you get with this film. Uh, you've got uh, Chase, Stephen Chase. That's right, the film is named after the man. Brilliant. Um, who is uh, minding his own business, gets caught up in uh, violence in the street, cops going down, and uh, in the dying words of a man that puts a gun in his hand is, You're it, good luck. And he's suddenly now involved in a game of tag, or a deadly prey style movie. And that's what it is. But it's just not Ted Pryor this time. It's a guy called William Zip, who was in uh, Hell on Battleground and a couple of the other ones, I think, as well. But yeah, this one's pretty good. It's no deadly prey. It's interesting seeing it set uh, in an urban environment as well. So um, hard one to find. That's Chase. Rapid Fire. Look at that cover. Look at that fucking cover. It's just mental. This film is mental. Rapid Fire, uh, Joe Spinell again. Um, I'm just going to read you the back because... you Anyway. The first barrel capable of continuous 300 round per minute rapid fire of a 308 Magnum shell. Second barrel is it <laughs> designed as a fully automatic 12-gauge shotgun. Spring-loaded clip holding back 14 of the awesomely powerful high brass shells. The third barrel, a miniature grenade launcher capable of firing five of the deadliest explosives in rapid succession. On top, a microchip-powered laser scan sighting accurate within inches for up to 400 yards. A portable 70mm rocket launcher with enough explosive force to level an entire city block. Finally, a miniature computer brain allowing only those who could input proper digital code to operate the weapon. They don't even tell you what the fucking film's about. It doesn't matter. You just know about the weapons. That's all you need to know. Rapid fire. He's a mercenary. He's hired to go after a bad guy. That's the plot. That's the weapon. Rapid fire. Jungle Assault. Australian tape. Japanese tape. Japanese one is my go-to. But, um, yep, look, this is one of the standardest plots you've ever... Standardist? One of the most standard plots you've ever heard. Um, it is the uh, classic general's daughter is kidnapped by rebels and the general... Doesn't know what to do, but then he thinks, okay, I know these Vietnam War veterans, let's ship them up and shape them out, and, or the other way around, and uh, send them after my little daughter. And that's what happens. And there's explosions, and there's helicopters, and it's a lot of fun. It's, um, yeah, it's cookie cutter, but who cares, man? Jungle Assault. Next up is Future Force, this one with David Carradine as a future bounty hunter. And, uh... He's good at his job, but he gets caught up with uh, corruption and uh, also has to try and keep whoops keep a uh, innocent girl uh, safe. So it's um, 
it's a mix of a bunch of films. You've got trances going on. Uh, there's a bit of Total Recall vibe going on. Um, future Kick, that kind of thing. Anyway, it's Future Force. David Carradine. White Fury. This one was... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of this one when I first saw it. I probably need to rewatch it. Um, it's uh, another one of the... Uh, it's a bit like Born Killer that I mentioned before. Um, some teenagers just minding their own business on a snowy holiday and these uh, escape criminals show up to uh, hold them hostage and make their lives hell and the kids have to escape. Um, yeah, one chance for survival. Um, yeah, I don't remember too much about it, but I remember... L- leaving the film not not enjoying it so i need to rewatch and see what white fury was all about again lost platoon this is definitely one of the more interesting outings for david um so you've got uh a reporter in nicaragua who is uh covering a civil war and discovers these uh what he thinks uh is ex world war 2 veterans um but they're very old of mind, but not of body. They are vampires, and they are fighting their own war. And it turns out they actually just go from war to war. And that's just what they do. They just jump around wars because they can never die. Interesting film, this one, Lost Platoon. Um, David didn't do enough horror films, and you know, probably should have done more. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit like, you know, uh, like... Uh, well, Platoon with Lost Boys, I suppose. Probably not a bad way of putting it. Lost Platoon. Eh, Lost Boys Platoon. I'll stop making bad jokes. The Final Sanction. Now, this film uh, is, for me, second only to Deadly Prey. This one is amazing. Um, I was conversing a little with David um, around about the time that Deadliest Prey was coming out, and he was quite active on Facebook and was asking people which film should be the next ones he was going to put out on DVD, and I kept saying over and over, Final Sanction, Final Sanction, because this thing is awesome. Um, There is no DVD, of course, it's just this tape, very hard to find. Another AIP release, of course, and uh, this one is Ted Pryor versus Robert Zadar. The plot is amazing. It's, um, I guess you'd say, post-apocalyptic. The uh, superpowers are America and Russia. They are sick of launching nuclear bombs at each other nothing's getting worked out so they figure let's just get our two best fighters and f- make them fight each other and the winner determines if we're going to have a a um a democratic republic or we're going to have a communist utopia <laughs> that's that's how they sort it out so it's the final sanction um it's it's awesome it really is a lot of fun this one it's just these two guys shooting each other and fighting each other Final Sanction, highly recommended. And uh, I also miss Robert Zadar. He was great in everything, him and that chin. And now we have Future Zone, the sequel to uh, Future Force. And slight uh, law of diminishing returns, unfortunately, but um, you do get uh, David Carradine back again, and you do get time travel, and you do get Charles Napier. So, I mean, those things are worth the price of entry, I think. Um, yeah, like I said, it's... it's uh, It's not the greatest, but um, I did have some fun with it, so that's Future Zone. Well, the next four all seem to come out in the same year. Um, They're more thrillers than anything else, and um, I'm not really sure what the story is. uh, I could make one up. Um, My opinion is that uh, David was given the opportunity to make four TV movies and churn them out quickly. That's what I think has probably happened here. And I can't say I've actually watched any of them yet. We've got Double Threat, Raw Nerve, Night Trap, and Center of the Web. I only got these recently. Um, flipping this around here. And yeah, I just haven't had a chance to chuck them on. But um, certainly the price was right to knock four David Pryors off my wants list. Um, you can see you've got uh, some named actors in these roles. Faces that you will recognize. Um, but yeah, I don't know a great deal about them. So... Um, I'll be adding those to my watch pile soon. Raw Justice with Pamela Anderson. Look at that hairdo. Amazing. This is right in uh, Pamela's heyday. Uh, Let me just read from the plot for you. Hard-hitting action. 
white-hot passions, explosive excitement power the blazing story of a streetwise ex-cop, a seductive core girl, and an innocent man famed, framed for murder, all, hur- all hurtling towards a head-on collision with raw justice. Amazing. we got David Keith, Robert Hayes, and Pammy Playgirl Anderson. Wow. Um, yep, you do see boobs. Um, from memory, there was a there was a, a sex scene against a fence, and there was probably another one because boobs. Um, it was it was all right. Uh, <laughs> Pam can't act. We all know that. Uh, it wasn't as good as I was really hoping for. I'll put it that way. But still, it's Raw Justice with Pamela Boobs Anderson. Bioforce One, also called Mutant Species. This one is uh, craptacular science fiction right here, folks. Powers Booth, Leo Rossi, you got Ted Pryor and Wilfred Brimley. It's always a sign of class right there. You get the word will in your film. And, um, yep, so the powers to be decide to get rid of uh, some nuclear waste. And the best way to do that is to launch it into space. But, of course, that doesn't work. Shit falls down and infects a poor army man who turns into this thing on the cover. More army men go after him. The man's best friend tries to save him. It's just a riot. Um, yeah. Australian DVD. Uh, there is a... Definitely is an American laser disc. I'm not sure if there's an American DVD. There could be. Anywho, Bioforce 1, a.k.a. Mutant Species. Science fiction from David. Good fun. And David goes uh, to the semi-big time here. This is Felony, our first widescreen film on DVD. Um, he's going for a PM Entertainment style explosive action first here, car flips and all that kind of stuff. You get Lance Henriksen as a rogue CIA agent. You get Leo Rossi here as the maverick detective. Um, let's go through the other names on here. You've got um, Jeffrey Coombs, you know, the reanimator himself. He's playing a reporter. Got David Warner, Ashley Lawrence, uh, Charles Napier, playing Charles Napier, uh, and Joe Don Baker. That's where I got Joe Don Baker in this film. This is this is uh, this is David at his um, at his biggest, I think. It's definitely has that feeling uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, good fun, lots of good fun with this one. Um, and the DVD is very easy to find on Amazon, so definitely you should check out Felony. War of the Living Dead, aka Zombie Wars. Um, yeah, this is like nearly a decade and a half since uh, Felony. And David's obviously taken a bit of a break, and um, we're into shot on digital age now. Um, and I've got to say, this one's pretty cheap. The um, gore effects are pretty cheap. The um, sets are all very cheap. Um, there is some fun to be had, but um, overall, yeah, it's not not a brilliant zombie film. The idea that the zombies are somewhat smart and are raising humans in a farm, a bit like Daybreakers is interesting but it's um yeah it's just all a little bit too cheesy but that's war of the living dead lost at war i have to admit i haven't actually watched this one yet i only got it fairly recently um but the write-up says that it's uh ted Pryor's back which is awesome and um him and his uh platoon are out fighting um and uh it gets slightly supernatural with some kind of shrouded creatures that uh provide wishes and their wishes come true and i'm not really sure i haven't watched it yet it certainly sounds different so uh lost at war uh i think it was filmed the same year as uh uh, zombie wars so um it's going to be shot on digital i imagine and um yeah well hopefully it's good night claws now i remember when this was coming out i was excited not because it was a David Pryor film, I didn't realise that, but because it was Reb Brown. And Reb Brown being one of my other favourite action films, Strike Commander, I was excited at the prospect of seeing some more Reb action. Um, though he's not screaming very much in this one, he's more um, the town sheriff, doesn't really know what's going on. Basically, it's a Bigfoot film. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a modern B film, shot on digital again. Um, the middle act's a bit slow, but it certainly picks up by the end. Um, we see uh, some CG Bigfootness. Frank Stallone 
That's Sylvester's brother. Reb Brown. Ted Pryor again. Sherry Rose. Yeah, it's not bad. I definitely need to rewatch this one. That's, uh, whoops. Um, yeah, I remember enjoying it when I first watched it when it came out, and I haven't seen it again, so uh, need to check out again. Night Claws. And this is where it all started to come back again. Deadliest Prey. The sequel to Deadly Prey, um, starring and filmed by uh, everybody involved in the first film, basically. So you get, uh, you get Ted... You get David Campbell, you get Fritz Matthews. There's a new suite of um, younger stars who I think about the only part of the film that doesn't quite work for me, like the young, cool hacker kids that try and save the day. They grate on my nerves a little bit, but um, mostly this is it's Deadly Prey, the same damn thing again, but um, for the modern age, and uh, it's still Ted running around. There's uh, some pretty funny scenes in it that reference the original film like when Ted goes to his uh, armaments cupboard and finds his old torn jeans that kind of stuff it's all there for the original fans of the first film so this is the original DVD that was um, put out directly by David you bought it from his website and that's the blu-ray that came out by uh, Olive Films um, and it is an actual blu-ray because this thing was shot in uh, HD it's not an upscale or anything it's just a nice 1080p picture so it's definitely the um, the highest resolution David Pryor film that you're going to get, Deadliest Prey. Not as good as Deadly Prey, but what is? And last in my collection is Relentless Justice. And uh, this one was uh, directed by David, um, written and produced by uh, Fabio Soldani, who was also involved in uh, Night Claws and Deadliest Prey, um, and is uh, somebody I've come to know on Facebook Um since the films had come out uh, and I do have to admit I haven't actually watched Relentless Justice yet uh, I picked it up around about the time that David passed and it just made me a bit sad um, but the time is coming that I really need to watch his final film um, it's got well Vernon, we Vernon Wells is in it uh, Ted Pryor's back Eric Roberts got Eric Roberts on the back there um, yeah, uh, it's it certainly looks like one I'm going to enjoy, and and based on the plot on the back here, it's um, uh, mother trying to find her lost daughter, and then gets caught up in a deadly prey situation of a um, team of people that are hunting humans for sport, and I mean that plot just keeps giving, so I'm bound to enjoy Relentless Justice. And that brings us to the end of my uh, overview of the films of David Pryor in my collection. There are three that I do not have that I've been having a lot of trouble trying to get. Uh, the first is a Lock and Load, which looks like it was only released on VHS, and um, a German DVD, which does not have any English audio, which is a shame. Um, that's from 1990. Also from the same year, there's Invasion Force, and that one just looks awesome from the cover. So that one I have to really hunt down. And uh, the last one is Hostile Environment, also called Watership Warrior. I think there's a DVD, and there's uh, one that looks like it's got uh, French audio or something, so I'm trying to find the English-friendly one of that. So that's the three I'm looking for. Uh, David was working on another film when he passed, which was called uh, Assassin's Fury, and I don't think that's going to be completed. But um, it was shaping up with a good cast, so that's a shame. But anyway... On a positive note, Deadly Prey. That's the best film ever made, and I will fight you if you disagree. Uh. Ah!